Hey everyone, my name is Emma and welcome back to Story Central, your center for all the best stories on Reddit and boy do I have a weird one today. So this starts on Monday, the 13th, as I receive an email from a VP not over my department, or bad VP. I am told that my team will be needed on the 4th. I politely tell them that our team has scheduled this day off and people already have plans. My team is the IT team and, as many of you know, the IT team gets shafted every time it can get shafted by any company. So over the course of the week I let my team know what is happening. I let them know I have been reaching out to higher ups to fix it. I also tell them that if their plans are ruined, I will make it right at work. Over the course of three meetings, it starts to look like things will not go my way. In response I sent an email to the CEO of the company. All of my higher ups knew I was going to do this and said I should do this as he is very family oriented and that he would not allow anyone to work on a national holiday. Well, he is on vacation in the Bahamas until the 6th, but his assistant informed me he would look at this after he gets back. So I tell everyone that it will be work from home and that we will be setting my cell phone as priority in the call routing, meaning I would get most of the calls. To be honest, I was expecting almost zero calls especially since I was asked to send out a notification that its support would cover the 4th of July. I never sent that email out. A day later I was given another outrage. I was told in an email that my employees would be required to be at the office and no one was allowed to work from home. They would be checking the door badge ins to verify we were at the office. I asked why in an email and they said that they wanted to make sure no one was playing video games at work. We normally work from home about two divided by third of the week and video game playing is a normal occurrence at work. So I walked into the person's office. After a very long conversation where she was losing the logic war with me, she told me that it's just it, you guys don't have lives. No I am not kidding you, this is exactly what they told me. I reported this to my VP who said, I will take care of this. It likely won't be until after the fourth, so get creative. I know this man well. We have worked together a long time and get creative is code for corporate fuckery. I asked the person requiring us to be at the office if they cared if we had an office party. They said no, as long as it did not interfere with the call flow. Even suggested using my new company card to pay for it. Go wild. Pro tip, never tell me to go wild. At this point, it was Tuesday the 21st. I let everyone know what's up, but that I have something planned. I asked who had things planned for that day. Two people told me they were planning to shoot off fireworks with their family, but the rest were planning BBQs with friends. I wrote an email to the VP over my department and the bad VP. I tell them all that I let everyone know. We all were expected to work until 8 p.m. Monday. For the conversation with the bad VP I will be having an office party as a sort of apology to the guys and gals who got shafted by this decision. The bad VP replied again, thank you for your understanding. Also yes I would expect an office party if I had to work on the 4th of July as well. So go wild and enjoy your time. Use your new company credit card if you need to cover a few expenses. Also I should not have to remind you or anyone else. No fireworks or alcohol on company property. So now it is time to tell you about my office. A while back, the IT team was moved from the main corp office and into a smaller building by itself. It has a nice gaming break room, a decent sized gym, and a full on drink bar. Soft drinks mind you, no alcohol at work. Outback is a big patio that crosses county lines as soon as you cross a small creek. A creek that just so happens to have a footbridge over it, leading to an empty field. I started making phone calls. Monday, June the 25th I called everyone into an hour early meeting that morning. I explained to them all that I will be making it right. I asked everyone to invite their friends and family to the office. No supplies will need to be brought by anyone. I tell them all that this will be non-alcoholic but that I will be planning something for everyone. I told them to expect all food to be provided and they don't need to bring anything unless they want to bring some fireworks, i.e. they won't have to spend a dime. The fourth came and the entire day, we did absolutely no work. No tickets, no calls came in. Well, seven calls did come in, but from the same person, the bad VP. She was calling to make sure we were manning the phones. All of us were playing video games or watching movies. 6 p.m. rolled around and everyone was told that the food was ready. People were expecting hot dogs, hamburgers, maybe a bratwurst or two. What they got was a full-on BBQ feast with pizza and other foods. There was smoked brisket, spare ribs, smoked sausage, smoked turkey, both kinds of tater salad, coleslaw, green beans with bacon and onion, potatoes au gratin, pizza from two different places, excellent hamburgers, and bratwurst hot dogs. On the dessert side was cake, very good cookies, four different kinds of pies, and about two pounds of fudge. 
families, and friends started showing up at around 6, 6, 15-ish. Some brought alcohol but I told them they would need to leave that in their cars as I was not that crazy. Some were not too happy about that but agreed as it was a free dinner for random strangers. So let me set the scene for you. I am out there with all calls routed to my cell phone, and everyone is just having a good time. We have a ton of people there just enjoying the fun night. Chatting about random stuff, eating the food, and occasionally lighting off some sparklers or throwing firecrackers into the stream. It's not stocked and only one foot deep. My VP, not the bad VP mind you, showed up with his family and brought some water balloons for the kids. And man children, around 8.30ish it's getting dark and people want to shoot off more than the simple sparklers and firecrackers we had been using. The VP over the IT department had everyone cross the footbridge, over county line and off company property mind you, and we set up a big wooden board using it as our launch pad. We fired off what we had for an hour or two, and sort of just hung out for a little while. At around this time people were tired and ready to head home. I told people to take home leftovers, within reason. We all clocked out at 8 and no one left until about 10.30. The bad VP did call once more while we were out back at the party. It was 7.50 and she called asking for a status update. My exact words were, Well you were the only one to call us today. The rest of us are on the back patio enjoying the 4th of July shindig. She simply acted like my boss and said as long as no alcohol or fireworks are on company property, I do not care. We ate roughly half of the food catered. The rest was taken home. Really quick, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to drop a like. A small group volunteered to stay behind to clean up including my VP. We had a funny conversation about how this will make waves with the bosses. But he said he had my back and asked me how much this cost. I just gave him a sideways look which made him laugh. Tuesday morning, I submitted the expense report to my VP. This email would inevitably make its way over to the bad VP and up the chain to the CIO of the company. It would be a bad idea to give out the exact cost of the party, mind you, but I can tell you that because of this 4th of July party, new rules were put into place. Any expenses of over 4K or more must be approved by the direct supervisor, VP over the department, and the full expense report must be sent to the financial department for review after the fact. Hint, the party cost over 6k. The BBQ was the most expensive part. I did not order from a low or mid-tier place. The place I ordered from has consistently been on the top 10 in the DFW listing for the last 30 years. I ate at that place so much I made friends with the owner. The best BBQ I have ever had. The pies and cakes were custom made by a bakery and the cookies were made by a boutique cookie place. I had 10 minus 12 packs of Coke, Coke Zero, DP, DP Zero, Pepsi, and Pepsi Zero. I bought five pepperoni, five sausage, five cheese, two Hawaiian, and three cheeseburger pizzas from one place, and nearly the same number from another place. Excluding the cheeseburger ones I subbed out those for a different specialty pizza from the other place. The burgers were from an excellent burger place that did catering. I know that owner well. He brought his kids for the night of fun after he heard what was going to be happening. He was also the one who brought the brat dogs as he recently added those to his menu. This was the most expensive office party in the history of the company. The only things more expensive than this were some business meetings that the CEO rented private rooms and high-end restaurants for. As for the CEO, he was outraged. Not at the cost of the party, mind you. He knew that the party would not have been necessary if people had been allowed to go home. He was outraged that it was the only group required to work on that day. When I submitted the logs showing how we received no real phone calls, no service requests, and that we basically watched movies, played video games during our shift, he had heard enough. He apparently sent out a scathing email about work-life balance and the importance of our holidays to every upper management. It was kind of funny as people wanted me to get in trouble for what I did, but the reality is other departments have done similar things in the past just not on the scale that it did. The bad VP was admonished quite effectively and sent me an apology email. I forwarded it to the team with a strong hint to not reply. Then my VP let the CIO and the CEO know about what the bad VP said. You guys don't have lives. The bad VP did actually confirm she said it in a meeting with her EVP. It did not go over well. I have never heard people yelling in an office meeting like that before. The CEO of the company came to our office and yelled at her. Not sure if she was fired but she is not at work today. In Active Directory, she does not have the down arrow of death, so not 100% what happened to her. I know she lost whatever clout she had at this company with her attitude. If anything more happens, I will update. But so far it looks like the fallout from this is that I caused a new rule to be put in place about how much you are allowed to spend at one time. The bad VP may or may not be let go, 
forced to resign. I know she got yelled at. Strangely, there is now no longer any pushback for my bid to get everyone back to working from home. I have a sister that's six years older than me. My parents for years canceled on me last minute because of my sister. I have a basketball game. Oops, sorry sister doesn't feel like going out. I am graduating ops, sorry sister had a bad day at work. They have missed both major and smaller events in my life because of her meltdowns. I met the love of my life. We decided to tie the knot. From the beginning I told my parents how I am worried my sister will ruin another special moment in my life. My mom told me over and over again it would not happen. The day of my wedding, I received a voicemail from my mom saying they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick and she was upset. I was hurt, my best man however is a jokester. He took my phone then went to my fiancé and asked if he could post a video of our wedding as a gift. On social media, she loved his idea. I had no idea about it until I came home. Our honeymoon was at a lakeside cabin. No cell service. The post's caption was my best friend. He is an amazing person even if his parents never showed up for him. The video was still pictures of us next to her parents, me on the dance floor, cutting the cake where you would normally see both parents and wedding pictures. The sound behind the video was my mom's voicemail explaining how they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick. I came home a week later to hundreds of messages. Family members from both sides insisted I take it down. I was told my sister hasn't stopped crying. My mom is refusing to leave the house. I may be the uh, here. I didn't take it down when I got my messages. I didn't call my family back right away. I waited until my vacation time was over at work and enjoyed my time with my wife. In our new home, before I contacted anyone, my dad told me to take down the video. It was just a bad night for them, that they will make it up to me and my wife for not coming. My reply was exactly how do you plan to make up my wedding? It's a once in a lifetime thing. You choose to ignore my feelings on the whole matter. Then he just repeated he will make it up to me. I told him I would take down the video only when he made up missing my wedding. Blustered, we both hung up the phone before we both said things we shouldn't have. Am I the uh, here? I could have just taken down the video. Not the idiot. They were finally called out on their blatant favoritism and they obviously didn't take it well. I'd hold off inviting them anywhere or to anything, Opus. At least for a while. Don't make them your first priority when you clearly aren't theirs. Focus on your new wife and your absolutely awesome best friend. They both sound like keepers. Not the idiot I think I'm in love with the best man. He absolutely showed your parents favoritism, hypocrisy, in the best way ever. I hope there will never be an invite to a baby shower etc. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe.